This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. On September 14th, 2013, WBC Junior Middleweight Champion Canelo Alvarez faced WBA Champion Floyd Mayweather Jr. in a unification clash of undefeated champs. The championship was contested at a contracted catch weight of 152 pounds. Going into the contest, some observers viewed the younger champion as the man who would finally solve the jigsaw puzzle that was Floyd Mayweather. But unfortunately for Canelo, this would not be his night. Mayweather put forth a masterclass performance in the art of the sweet science. Floyd was much quicker on his feet far faster with his hands, and considerably sharper with his timing. Mayweather was able to control the fighting range to his liking, and in doing so, he was effectively neutralizing Canelo's offense while simultaneously creating quality offense of his own. Canelo continued trying and giving it his best throughout, but no matter what he tried, Mayweather almost always had an answer. It was a tremendous display of ring smarts, boxing skills, and athleticism from Mayweather. In short, it was an absolute mismatch. At the end of 12 rounds, it was a majority decision. One judge amazingly had it even at 114 apiece, overruled by the other two judges who both scored it for Floyd, 116 to 112 and 117 to 111. With the victory, Mayweather earned the unified championship. At just 23 years old, Canelo tasted defeat for the first time in his professional career. Despite the close scorecards, especially the inexplicable card that scored the fight even, the manner of Mayweather's dominance left a lot of questions regarding Canelo's future. How would he rebound from such a one-sided loss? It has been more than seven years since then, and during that time, we now have some answers regarding that question. Canelo has had 13 fights since the loss. The first of those happened in March 2014, when Canelo defeated Alfredo Angulo by 10th round technical knockout. In July 2014, Canelo faced WBA junior middleweight champion Arislandi Laura but this was a non-title bout. It was a close and competitive affair that ended in a split decision. One judge scored it 115 to 113 for Laura, overruled by the other two judges who scored it for Canelo, 115 to 113 and 117 to 111. In May 2015, Canelo faced James Kirkland, and Canelo won that fight by third round knockout. In November 2015, Canelo challenged lineal middleweight champion Miguel Cotto. The vacant WBC was also on the line for Canelo, but the organization had stripped Cotto of his title because of a dispute over sanctioning fees. Canelo defeated Cotto by 12-round unanimous decision with scores of 118 to 110, 119 to 109, and 117 to 111. With the victory, Canelo was the new WBC middleweight champ. In May 2016, Canelo defended the WBC middleweight belt when he defeated former junior welterweight champion Amir Khan by sixth round knockout. In September 2017, Canelo challenged WBO junior middleweight champion Liam Smith. Canelo won the title when he defeated Smith by ninth round knockout. In May 2017, Canelo dominated Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and won a lopsided unanimous decision where all three judges scored it a 120 to 108 shutout in favor of Canelo. In September 2017, Canelo challenged unified WBA IBF WBC middleweight champion Gennady Golovkin. Canelo technically held the claim to the lineal middleweight crown going into this one, and at the end of 12 rounds, the fight was ruled a draw. 
One judge had it even at 114 apiece. One scored it 115 to 113 in favor of Golovkin. And the other scored it 118 to 110 in favor of Canelo. Canelo and Golovkin had a rematch in September 2018. Golovkin had since been stripped by the IBF, and this time Canelo was awarded a majority decision victory. One judge had it even at 114 apiece, overruled by the other two judges who both scored it 115 to 113 in favor of Canelo. With the victory, Canelo won the unified WBA WBC middleweight championship. In December 2018, Canelo defeated super middleweight Rocky Fielding by third round technical knockout. In May 2019, Canelo defended his unified WBA WBC middleweight championship against IBF middleweight champion Daniel Jacobs in a unification bout. Canelo was awarded a unanimous decision with two judges scoring it 115 to 113 and the other having it 116 to 112. In November 2019, Canelo challenged WBO light heavyweight world champion Sergei Kovalev. Canelo won the championship by 11th round knockout. And most recently, on December 19th, Canelo challenged WBA super middleweight champion Callum Smith. This one was broadcast on the relatively new streaming app service known as The Zone, and the vacant WBC title was also on the line. Canelo dominated the champion throughout. At the end of 12 rounds, Canelo was awarded a lopsided unanimous decision, with two judges scoring it 119 to 109, and the other having it 117 to 111. So since losing to Floyd Mayweather Jr. more than seven years ago, Canelo is 12-0-1, with six of those wins coming by way of knockout, and he's defeated some damn good names in that time. Since losing to Floyd, Canelo has won major world championships in four different divisions. Middleweight, junior middleweight, light heavyweight, and most recently super middleweight in his dominant effort against Callum Smith. That's mighty impressive stuff. Canelo is also widely viewed as one of the very best pound-for-pound -pound boxers in the world today. And indeed, many if not most observers view him as the best of the best in all of boxing. Make no mistake, what Canelo has accomplished since losing against Mayweather is nothing short of fantastic. However, a deeper examination of his resume provides plenty of fuel to his biggest critics and loudest detractors. For starters, some of the decisions themselves were considered controversial. A lot of observers believed that Laura deserved the nod in their contest. Most observers believed that Golovkin deserved a victory in their first encounter. And a lot of people also think Golovkin deserved to win in their rematch. On a related note, there is also this idea that Canelo is a protected asset because of his tremendous star power. Mike Tyson was a boxer you often hear described as having a fan-friendly style. Similarly, it could be argued that Canelo is someone who has a judge-friendly style. There is a perception that Canelo is often the beneficiary of at least one judge scoring a fight too widely in his favor. Many are critical of the 117 to 111 score he got against Laura. Many observers thought the scores were too wide in his victory over Cotto. And of course, the 118 to 110 scorecard in his favor from the first Golovkin fight is highly controversial. And even his loss against Mayweather. The fact that one judge had that fight even at 114 apiece is a real head scratcher. Then there is the whole catchweight business. This started with his first fight after Floyd against Angulo. This one was originally scheduled to take place at 154, but a couple of days before the fight, it was renegotiated up to 155. His bouts against Laura and Kirkland were also at 155, as were his middleweight championship contests against Miguel Cotto and Amir Khan. 
That was five fights in a row at 155, one pound north of the junior middleweight limit. He also had the fight against Chavez Jr., which took place at 164. So there are valid criticisms to be made of Canelo during this period, but in my opinion, they do not overshadow all of the great things he has accomplished. The catchweight fights are what they are. They aren't historically unique, and only two of his catchweight bouts were title fights. When he won the middleweight title against Cotto, and also when he defended that title against Khan. Again, these situations aren't unique. Even the bout with Floyd was at a catchweight, and in terms of the Cotto and Khan title bouts, they were both naturally smaller than middleweight in any case. And regarding the close decisions, well, it's definitely true that Canelo has a judge-friendly style. But close fights happen in boxing. Bad decisions happen too. At the end of the day, Canelo edged it against Laura, and he edged it in the rematch with Golovkin. These fights are good examples of something all too common these days. That whenever we have a close contest, a certain percentage of fans scream robbery when they disagree with the outcome. The first fight with Triple G? Well, I definitely thought that one was a little controversial, but who the hell am I? I'm not a professional judge, I'm just a fan with my own opinions. The facts remain, Canelo beat Laura, and he has a draw and a victory against Gennady Golovkin. Add in his victories against Miguel Cotto, Danny Jacobs, Sergey Kovalev, and Callum Smith? And that's a damn fine run he's been on over these last seven years. My take here is that these criticisms of Canelo, while valid, are often way overstated. The fact remains he has accomplished a great deal since losing against Mayweather. Even in his last three fights alone, he won a high-profile championship contest in three different weight classes. That's exceptional. Canelo has shown tremendous improvement over these last seven years, and amazingly, he continues improving. In my estimation, Canelo is probably reaching his peak right now. He is justifiably and deservedly viewed as one of the very best boxers in the world today, with many viewing him as the best. Alvarez is also the biggest superstar in boxing today. I mean, you have AJ competing in the marquee division with a potential mega bout showdown on the horizon, and you still have the living legend known as Pac-Man. Both huge stars in their own right and a valid part of this discussion. But Canelo is the one who emerged as the heir to Floyd in terms of becoming the new face of professional boxing. In conclusion, the one-sided nature of his loss against Mayweather is something that could have ruined lesser men, but it most certainly did not ruin Canelo Alvarez. Canelo's mental strength and determination are beyond reproach, and these are the exact attributes that not only enabled him to bounce back from that loss, they've enabled him to improve and evolve as an elite-level boxer. That desire and ability to continue improving is what has enabled Canelo to succeed at the highest level across multiple weight classes in recent years. In boxing, it's often about how a boxer rebounds from a loss that helps truly define his greatness. And the way Canelo has rebounded since losing against Floyd has been nothing short of magnificent. And amazingly, Alvarez only recently turned 30, so he still has plenty of time to accomplish even more. I, for one, cannot wait to see him back in action. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.